This instructional video is designed to show you the time-dependent Schrodinger equation and how we can take advantage of the separability of the wave function solution to achieve a time solution as well as the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And so we have here our partial derivatives that deal with space and our partial derivative that deals with time. For the sake of brevity, I can replace this with operator H for the Hamiltonian, because that's our kinetic plus potential. And the thing we want to note is that we can separate this wave function solution in space and time into a space solution and a time solution. Now, that separability then allows us to simplify this time-dependent Schrodinger equation by replacing this quantity with the Hamiltonian operator and acknowledging that the time portion will not be impacted by these space derivatives. And over here, the space portion will not be impacted by the time derivative. As a result, we have the time function multiplying the Hamiltonian which will act on the space part. That then is going to be equal to the space part multiplying the time derivative acting on the time part. Now because we have separability, both sides have to be equal to some constant. We'll call it E, it's convenient and we need to multiply both sides by that. So I will use the blue. So this gets an E, this gets an E. Now the next thing we can do is recognize that will allow us to separate out all of this. And as a result, what we'll have is one part that's time and one part that is space. So I'll use the green to circle out the parts that I'm going to use in each case. I can use green here for time, and this part is also time. I'll use the red to highlight the part that is space. So that's going to be our space. This is our time. And for the time part of the solution, I then have this quantity E times the function itself equals I H bar. And because we've separated, we can use straight derivative instead of partial. For the space part, we'll see that this is how we can recover the familiar form of the Schrodinger equation and this is the time independent version. Now this space solution, it's going to take on different forms based on the specifics of the spatial content and aspects of the problem. However, this is something that we can actually solve. If we separate out everything, uh, doing a little bit of awful algebra, we'll get minus i e over h bar equals one over f times its derivative. Now, this construction will allow us to have a natural log, and after doing some basic calculus, followed by a little bit more awful algebra, we get the final form of the time solution. And that function is actually an exponential, minus i e t over h bar. So it's possible now to see uh, by stepping through this, that we can start with the time dependent Schrodinger equation, take advantage of the separability of the wave function solution, which allows us to separate our wave function equation, and through the use of some fancy calculus and differential equations tricks, find an explicit solution for the time dependent portion, and the time independent Schrodinger equation which allows us to set up eigenvalue problems and find solutions for the space part.